Welcome back to the watch. And just when you thought your IPs were safe from the Jitter Taika Waititi. Nobody's th thought any of their IPs lately are safe from anybody. This is true. All these directors and writers are just... It's Kathleen Kennedy under the table. <laughs> Basically, uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about Taika Waititi and his upcoming Star Wars project. Now, this is interesting because I hadn't heard much about this after the uh, unmitigated disaster that was uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Yes. Because, you know, that's usually what happens where some director's really hot because they made one good film that people are like, oh, this is great. So everybody goes, oh, I want them. I want yeah, them to Make do my movie now. Make my movie. Then they do a second one and everybody hates it. And then everybody goes, let's just uh, forget about everything, right? But apparently his Star Wars uh, project is still happening. Which is crazy because I th thought it was kind of cancelled. Mm. Because every time they asked him, how's that script going? He goes, oh, it's still a blank page. Which I'm like, bro, this is Star Wars. Yeah. I would have three movie scripts by now if I was a director. Yeah. For when they asked me, hey, do you want to make a Star Wars movie? I'd be like, there's this one, there's this one, there's this one. Where he's just like, I don't know what to do with this movie in this franchise. And the fact that he asked Natalie Portman, do you mean is my Star Wars movie I'm making? And she's like, oh, I've already been in Star Wars. And he goes, oh, which one? That's when I'm like, whoa, okay, I do not trust this man with my life. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a, some recent quotes from him because he's be, he's basically been uh, talking a little bit, teasing, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, and he's basically said that his film, some people will love it, some people will hate it. And that is a very, very... Bad sign in my Red opinion. flag. Yeah, this is like the Ryan Johnson thing again. You know how that quote ended up uh, basically resurfacing of like, I want to make a film that half the people love it and half... It's basically that all over again, which terrifies me because that is not something that we need in Star Wars currently. Right now, Star Wars is in a very... I'd say it's in the, the lowest place it's ever been yeah. since the franchise was ever built. Yeah. Uh, like it right was now, safer after George finished the trilogy and the before doing prequels. Yeah, like... Yeah. Once George was done and no one was doing any more Star Wars stuff, yeah. it's worse now. Yeah, uh, Star Wars right now is in a very dark place. And I think a lot of people who are trying to say that it's it's not that bad is that uh, straight up coping. Like yeah. you are just coping. Prequel fans, original trilogy fans. Extended Universe fans. Extended Universe fans. Even sequel fans. Yeah. Because they're not even getting any more sequels. Like Everybody is pretty much unhappy at the way things have been going at the moment. All the Star Wars stuff that's been happening as of late has been mid mixed with bad. Yeah. Like Tales of the Jedi, I think in the last two years is the... Wait, when did the season two of the Mando come out? Was that? I think that was before. I enjoyed season two of the Mando and Tales of the Jedi. Tales sure. of the Jedi was good. Yeah. And I enjoyed that uh, break in Boba Fett where we went and got Mando episodes. I enjoyed that too. I enjoyed so, like, the Mando it's episode. So Boba Fett. Yeah. odd to me. Yeah. Uh, and this is the kind of the issue is that nobody is really saying that any Star Wars films or Star Wars property in the last two years has been good. Nobody's out here saying... And, and no one's unanimously you know, saying... Like, everyone can watch the original trilogy, all yes. the prequels, and say, those are good films. Yes. And you know what? Even those who hate on the prequels can say... Watching them now, in the perspective I have, they're not too bad. Where, like, people who say, I oh, like Andor, the people who, like, rebuttal that, like, nah, man, I don't like it. There's no Jedi, there's no Force, there's no... Yeah. None of that. Like, I'm sorry, look, I don't think we've ever really spoken about Andor. Let's just give a quick synopsis of Andor. Just very quick, for people who are curious. I don't want to ruffle any feathers here. I think Andor, in terms of a show, in its competency mm. and stuff like that, is fantastic. Yeah. Cinematic design, fantastic. But I don't think it's a good Star Wars show because none of the core elements to Star Wars are in the show. Yeah. Simple it as that. It explores too much away from the core concepts. Yeah. And like I and, and I want to I just want to add this on. I don't think it's bad to have that as a show in Star Wars in general. Yeah. The only problem is when you're so starved of all the core stuff of Star yeah. Wars. And that's the only good thing you get. Is something that's so completely unrelated to Star Wars. That's cool. That's where I have the issue yeah. with it. And even then I've read and participated in a lot of like extended universe Star Wars things. And mm. even those things still have those core elements that Star Wars always has, mm. where Andor is so kind of separated from a lot of that it doesn't feel like the same Star Wars that I grew up watching and participating because yeah. I'm telling you growing up man that's all I did for a good like from the ages of like maybe 8 up to like 14 every single day was just Star Wars yeah. there was the movies the games the books TV shows like whatever so like I, I ate that stuff up yeah. and it wasn't until Disney came out with all this other stuff that I kind of just yeah. and this is the thing is like a lot of people will be like oh you just want lightsabers and Jedi and stuff it's like 
Yes. Yeah. But that's literally the core elements of the first six films. I will say though, because the sequels came out mm. and they gave us those things, and I still didn't like it. Oh, they're still no, no. core. They did not give us those things. They mate. gave it what? Pe- that's what people nah. would say. That's what people would say. I'm Lightsab- saying lightsabers are not. F- they're not baseball bats. I know they're not. not. Swear here, Nathan. I know they're, they're not. They're not baseball bats. They I did know. not give us anything yeah. of substance. I know. Yeah, that's the thing. There wasn't any substance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, back to Taika Waititi. He has basically come out and he's said a couple of little things uh, about his film, upcoming film. And one of them is, it's going to piss people off. And he jokes that his Star Wars movie will divide the fandom. Uh, and I think he's right. I think he's right. For sure. Because we've gotten to this point where it doesn't matter really what anybody does in a Star Wars uh, film. People either love it or hate it now. Yeah, it's kind of like a... It's a toss-up between who's going to like it, who's going to hate it. So we don't really have much information on what he's going to be doing. That's my main concern. Because we don't know where it's set. Mm. We don't know what he's going to do in it. Mm. Because if he is, for example, going very far away from the Skywalker saga, doing his own thing, and basically just Which rewriting... Which I think is a kind of a good idea. That's what I think he needs to do. If he goes anywhere near the Skywalker saga and does stuff... Then yeah, people are going to get annoyed because you're going to rewrite things and change things, or just the theme, the way that he respects canon mm. or like what he just doesn't care for any of it. For him, it's yeah. what makes a good scene or what makes a funny joke or I want this message to be brought up, so I'm going to send it that way. Mm. I feel like he's not a director who, at least with Filoni, right? The man knows concepts of Star Wars. Yes. He doesn't always execute them well, but yeah. if you give him, like, um, episode one, last fight, yeah. he will tell you about the yes. psychology behind it, which is something that at least Star Wars fans can respect. Yes. Where Taka Waititi doesn't even know Nelly Portman was Padme yeah. in the in the prequels. Kind of a big deal. So yeah. it, it concerns me. Because, well, that means you haven't even watched the movies, let alone yeah. done any more extended research. So look, if he does something away from it all, People will still be divided because probably. Re- so this is the thing though. I'm more than happy for all these directors and all these people that are making these trash Star Wars things that I don't really care too much about. I'm more than happy if they make them in not only the sequel era but like future Star Wars eras. Right. Do whatever you want. I don't care. The thing that I care about is the old Republic stuff. Yeah. Not the High Republic. Couldn't care less. The old Republic. Give me some good. Old the Republic old Republic stuff. is the greatest Star Wars stuff. You could possibly imagine. Yeah. And I want to see that more than anything, but I want to see it. And as much as I hate to say this, because I I am not one of those people that thinks that Dave Filoni is like the savior of Star Wars. Yeah. He's not. I don't think so either. But I think he's the best of of the bunch at this point. If I'm being completely honest, in a perfect world, what I want is the original writing team from Bioware who did the games and the MMO to do Star Wars. Look, like, see the things like just take the take the MMO storylines of all the different of all the different things and just make them live I action. Just don't tr- the writers that Disney have, mm. I do not trust them. Yeah. I do not trust them. Not all. at all. Because you know what? When George sold Star Wars, he said, Hey, here's a draft for the movies I want. Yeah. And they went, Cool. Yeah. And that was part of the verbal agreement. Hey, Bob, I'll sell you my IP if you make these movies for me. And Bob said, sure, and then lied to his face. Yeah. So, much. like, I want, as well as you, an amazing Old Republic, even if they weren't movies, yeah. if they were games or TV shows or whatever, I would throth for that. But at the same time, I, I can't trust them, especially if they're getting by TT now to make a movie. There are so many good directors. Especially when we've had the KOTOR remake, like, cancelled twice. Yeah. That is crazy. That is crazy. That's crazy. That is, it's insane. So, but if they're getting people like this to make the next few Star Wars yeah. movies, especially after like Ryan Johnson, after his one movie, yeah. they're like, all right, you're not making see, anymore. See, I don't know why they would even trust him to this make kind it. Of, this kind of pulls me back into the Andor discussion because I remember the director of Andor, is it Tony Gilroy? I can't remember. He, I, I remember him coming out and saying he's not a Star Wars fan, mm. which is something that I've often taken issue with just because like we've had so many of these directors who are not Star Wars fans and then the things they make, absolute trash. Yeah, not Star Wars. However, however, in his show, in terms of the writing and how much care he took to the, the craft of the show, mm. I respect that a exactly. lot. Now, I think, and this is where I have like two minds of it, because obviously he's doing a story on Andor, which is very removed from anything Star Wars to begin with. So it's not like he's working with much here. But if we're able to get competent directors like that, 
I hate to say this, but even if they're not the biggest fans, I would much rather that yeah. than these people who pretend to be fans and are just, they're just destroying things. Yeah, because the thing with George, at least, I feel like he took the story and directing mm. more seriously mm. than the world building. Yeah. Like, he was like, I want to make a good film. Well, see, that- the thing is, the world building's been done now. Yeah. We don't need any more world building. You just need to have good directors yeah. and good writers who know how to make a decent story. Like, how, much, that- how much world building do you need to do for the Old Republic? Coruscant already exists. Everybody knows about it. Droman Kass and Korriban. You don't They're need- the only ones you need to world build. Everything else is done. Even then, you don't have to do too much because it's a movie. You can just, like... Here's a screenshot of stuff I want, happening. I want like TV shows. Though. TV shows. Because we get more. We get more content. Yeah, Actually, it's Disney and they give us 30 they, minute episodes. They basically give us movies. They give us movies. Yeah, yeah, they do. They, you're right. You're right. Give me a movie, damn it. I just want Give watch me it. Game of Thrones level length, 10 episodes. Give me that in a TV show. But I don't think we're getting it because if Taika Waititi is the next one that's going to give us a movie, yeah. it's, it's. And there was still the Ryan Johnson trilogy that has never been cancelled. Which I think is still happening at some point. Mm. Is Kathleen Kennedy under the table? <laughs> it's just uh, it, it baffles me so much. And the Ray movie, upcoming Ray movie. <sighs> See what I'm saying here, guys? Like Star Wars is in the worst position it has been in since it was created, and they are just full steam ahead. This isn't even like the Marvel thing where it's like, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So yeah. they're gonna they're gonna t- start turning shit. With Star Wars, they have just been. From the get go, laser focused on destroy into, <laughs> into the ground. Yeah, <laughs> it baffles me, and I I'm concerned the most because I feel like when he makes this movie, mm. everyone else that participates is going to get dragged into it. Because with Love and Thunder, right? They were not even following the script half the time. He yeah. was just like, action, do what you want. That's funny. Let's do that. And then in the edit, he's like, ooh, I don't have a movie here anymore. Yeah. And that makes it harder for everyone working on this movie. So I'm. I'm not concerned for the fans who are going to like roast this yeah. movie, which I'm guessing we're going to. It's also the poor crew and just everyone else has to like deal with him. Because well, if he hasn't written a script. What worries me the most is that it's not even going to be like a a movie. Yeah. It's going to be like, it's going to be Thor, Love and Partner, but Star Wars skit. It's going to be like that, SNL. Yeah, skits. that yeah. that worries me. That worries me. Wait, uh, that is not what Star Wars needs right now at all. And the fact that, you know, no one else is talking about that. Because I think Skeleton Crew is coming out. That's the next thing we're going to get, don't which care. don't care about. But, like, no one's talking about that. There's no director or writers coming out saying, hey, Skeleton Crew is going to be controversial. It's going to be awesome or great. Let's put and- things into context. Skeleton Crew, don't care. Upcoming Ray movie, don't care. What's the other one? The uh, Acolyte. Acolyte, yep, don't care. What else have we got? I don't know. Because guess what? I don't care. Exactly. And that is just depressing. Just like there's so many areas and so many stories that can be told that just would be like would be worldwide phenomenons, yeah. but they don't go near any of them. No. It baffles me, and I it disappoints me because I know how amazing they could be with yeah. competent people to do it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm glad they don't because the stuff they have touched, like Kenobi, which was probably the easiest oh, TV yeah. show to make, yeah. they butchered it completely because they wanted to put in their own story with their own agenda and basically subvert it into something that they thought would be a good message for you viewers. It reminds me of when after Game of Thrones season eight ended and everybody was so upset and so mad and they announced that they were doing a Stark prequel. Yeah. And I sat there in disbelief like, why would you... Don't get me wrong. I know the Stark fans out there and that's fine. That's great. But you... Everybody wants to see the dragons. Everybody wants to see Targaryens. And then they ended up canceling that and going with House of the Dragon. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a worldwide thing because this is an awesome story. And it was. And you know what? I'll make another prediction. After this, after they've finished House of the Dragon, they're going to do Aegon's Conquest. Mm. And it's going to be massive. It's going to be worldwide. Aegon's Conquest in live action will be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. That is what I want Star Wars to do. You have the stories already there that are the coolest stories. Just use them. Just use them. It's so easy. They're already done. You don't have to write it. Ah. Anyway, guys. Uh, we're going to have to wait till we die before we get good Star Wars again, I think. Legit. Like, we're going to be in retirement homes when a decent Star Wars movie comes out. Oh, God, I hope not. And we'll forget. We'll no, be like, we'll what just, is this? We'll put on, like, an AI headset that just makes things into live action. Yeah. And we'll just The make other annoying thing, right, that I just realized, they don't make any good Star Wars stuff. And because they're Disney and love to control their IP, mm-hmm. any fan stuff that comes out, cancelled. 
I mean, people it's making... not cancelled. You can technically make all the fan stuff. You just can't make any money from it. No, but like they remember they were doing like a Star Wars Battlefront fan game, right? And they Disney's like, you need to stop doing that, otherwise we will sue you. I don't know about games. I know yeah. about like YouTube videos. Oh, YouTube videos and whatever. That's fine. Yeah. But it's like once you start, comp- like for example, they were making Battlefront 2, like mm. EA was, and Disney's like, yeah, you can't do that because these guys are making this. Right. And even though, you know, yeah. it's just stuff like that where it's like, you know what? People could make pretty cool, you know, Kotar remakes, but they're not going to let you. Yeah. But then at the same time, they're not going to do it either. Yeah. So it's, it's a lose lose no matter what we do. Anyway, that's the sad state of uh, Star Wars. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, stay on watch.